Okay. And why this is still up, I'm not sure. Uh, let's minimize that. And we'll start with the syllabus today. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, it's not updated. This was last summer's syllabus for this course. The core stuff is correct. The fine points are not. Because, number one, I wasn't sure if they're going to let the course run with four students, only two paid. They may still not, but uh, hopefully they, they will. It will really be helpful to me to know, I know Bill doesn't need it to graduate, you were already graduated, but do you need it to graduate? You do, okay. That's what we need to hear, because then now I have an arguing point. No, we can't close it because we'll lose a graduate if we don't, okay, if we do. Um, it happened this morning earlier, um, they canceled both sections of the Cal 1, Calculus 1, one on this campus, one on that campus, and uh, then two students came to see somebody over on the other campus saying that one student said, I have every class I need to complete my degree this term except Calculus 1 that was canceled. She had been registered for it. So, uh, and uh, earlier in, uh, a ball player, a baseball player, who is following his sequence and he has very little flexibility with it, he said, if I don't get Cal 1, I won't get Cal 2, I won't get Cal 3, and then I won't be able to graduate. So we opened it back up for those two students. And uh, so now I have arguing points. If they say, I said, look, we'll lose a graduate if you do. Thank you for being here. Okay. <laughs> Bill was doing me no good whatsoever. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, but you, it's good to hear. Okay. So hopefully they'll keep it open. I hope so. Huh? I hope so. Yeah, I, I think they will. I'm willing to teach it. I probably won't get paid for it, but I married money, so who cares about that? Okay, so we'll go with that. All right, so this is not the current version of the syllabus. I'll try to get that corrected maybe this afternoon, but I doubt it. Because this afternoon I've got to go back to the Birmingham campus. My fault, I left my lunch over there. I had to go come into that campus this morning. I didn't want to leave my lunch in the car where it was going to get hot, so I put it in the fridge and then. The morning was just absolutely nuts, first day of class and that kind of stuff. And then a kid needed a ride over here to go to its air conditioning refrigeration classes, so I uh, was rushing out, waiting on them, so I left my lunch right there in the fridge. So I'm going at 2 o'clock to go back and eat lunch, <laughs> okay, so, because uh, I won't be back on that campus until Friday, and I don't want to imagine what that lunch will look like there. Okay, so anyway, I'll probably not be here after class today. Uh, but most days I will be. So let me go over <coughs> the correction to this. This is Math 227, Calculus 3, four credit hour course. And the times here are, of course, wrong. It is Monday and Wednesday. The days are right. But what is it? 12.15 to 2.55. I believe that's right, isn't it? Well, it says here. 12.55. Oh, 1.55. Sorry. I want to keep you an extra hour. <laughs> okay, 1.55. You're right. 12.15 to 1.55. In the summer, the classes were much longer because it was only a 10 week term. It was too long, but it was still fun. Okay. We are on the right campus and we're in the right room. That still works. And this is the same instructor. And my office is in room 265. And since you're new, you don't probably know where that is. Um, have you been on Bethany before? My first time. Oh, boy, are you in for a treat. Okay. So you go out the door here and hang a left, go down that little half flight of stairs there. Goes almost to the end of the hall, and right before you run into the wall, there's a stairwell there. Office right next to the stairwell. That's my office. Yes, it's right there. Okay. And uh, so that's where I will be. Now, on the Birmingham campus, on Fridays, I'm on the Birmingham campus, and this afternoon I'll be there. And I'm in B122. The B building over there is called the Academic Building. Are you familiar with Birmingham campus? Oh, are you? Uh, they were just states in transit. Uh, I see. Okay, and they weren't offering Cal 3 this term? Okay, well, I won't tell them you need to graduate. That's what I was going to say. I'll just say you need to graduate. Okay, I'll be really careful with that. You probably weren't in many two critical classes or four people classes over there, were you? No, my Cal 2 class over the summer had about 40 people. Wow. Was insane. Yeah. We had a good sized one, but not anywhere close to 40. This room won't even hold for it. Yeah. Wow. So, B 
get used to intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, but on the Birmingham campus, uh, if you find the B Hall over there, academic building, this is the West Campus over there. Just ask for Dr. Pruitt's office. Everybody knows who Dr. Pruitt is, and he has a suite of offices, you know, four rooms, and I'm in the copy room behind the secretary's desk. That's where I'm on Friday mornings from 8 to 12, or the other left right, there it is. Okay. Now, here is a number. This is the secretary's number, 929-6377, uh, and I put that on Summer's uh, syllabus, which is this little summer syllabus, because in spring term, the phone in the office didn't work. Yesterday, or Friday, the phone worked. So I don't know the number for sure, but I think it was 6409 is what the number used to be. So if they just got the phone working again with the same number, that's what it is. But if not, 6377 is the secretary. She can just yell back and say, you got a phone call. So uh, here's that one. Now, aha, here's Corey, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, it looked like it was canceled. I didn't cancel it, uh, but uh, I think the last time I saw, were you in the course or yes, sir. you were? They just, they just, uh, they canceled me from the players. I just got to check out, but they said. What's that again? They just canceled me from the players. They told me that the players got canceled. That my hearing said that. They said the players got canceled. They canceled me from the players. I found out yesterday. But uh, I just went and checked on it today. They said the players canceled. Is it still canceled? The, the one time I looked a long time ago, there was only one student in it. I don't know if that was you or if you had it later. I just didn't see that. Yeah, I was probably, probably would be. Okay. Um, can you take it next term? Uh, I can, but like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, graduate this semester. You're trying to graduate this semester? Yes, sir. Well, I'll, what time was it scheduled? Uh, usually, like, I think probably about 10 minutes after this day. So. Okay. All right. Okay. So, if, uh, if you need it to graduate, I'll try to open it back up, especially if I can find if there are any other students in it. Okay. Have, you, have you already paid for it or not, sir? Okay. Yes, I'll try you from this page. Okay. We'll do. Um, we'll try to open it back up, so and so we'll go and meet the night after this. Um, so starting at 3? Uh, 2, I think 2.30. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, 2. Oh, 2.30. Okay, 2.30, okay. That will give me a little time. Okay. So much for that easy lunch. Then. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll try to have open that back up well, at 2 30 this afternoon. And it'll be in this room, as far as I know. Is that where it was originally? Yes, sir. Yeah, they had taken my name off of it a long time ago. Yes, sir. And I seen, I was like, I don't know. I asked you about last semester, when this past semester, where you yeah. uh, teach. Oh, it was, still, it was listed staff room. Mm -hmm. Okay. That probably was evil plot of theirs. Well, if my name had been on it, they knew they had to fight to cancel it, so they took my name <laughs> off. Okay. So. Well, do you take Cal 3 and differential equations? equations. Uh, yeah, I, we yeah, allow yeah. students to do that. Yeah, if you want to, that's you that's want to take it right after this? I got to talk to my wife. Okay. Yes, sir. You take this out. I can knock it out. I mean, you can get some work on this line. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try to open it as soon as this class is over with, and uh, and then if you're still in it, you'll still be there, and you can then add it if you want to, uh, and you can get permission. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I have to send in all the paperwork again. Yeah, oh, oh, oh because a transient. Yeah. Yeah, but don't you have to have permission for you to send in school or classes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if it can get done this week, then it'll be fine. So if you want to stay for class, you can, because uh, better than to miss it. So a lot of the class will be the same thing we're doing here, syllabus and that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going over. So you may be able to catch me there at 6409 if they kept the number the same. <coughs> but if, you, if that doesn't work, try 6377. That's the secretary's number. She'll either take a message or yell back to them and say, You got a phone call. 
My email address is good. Now let me tell you about uh, voicemails, okay? Please, if you're going to call, even in my office number down the stairs, uh, you know, down the hall here, um, only call during office hours because I don't know if my voicemail works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I'm a, you know, I can't tell what's not there, so uh, don't bother leaving a message uh, unless I can find out sometime later it's working again. Uh, so I only call during office hours, and if I'm not in there during office hours, hang out and call a few minutes later just in case I was down the hall at the restaurant or something like that. Okay, on this number, either 6409 or the 63977, don't leave a message there. Neither one of those are my phone numbers. That's the secretary's number. The other one's uh, grant coordinator number. He's not there on Friday, so that's why I use her office then. So uh, please don't leave a message there. I'll never hear those. And she'll say, "What? Who is this?" You know. So, so anyway, uh, that's my that. Now here's my office hours. These are incorrect. Let me give you the correct ones. Mondays, eight to ten. I lost my eight thirty class. Uh, I was really sad to uh, Math 100. Uh, another instructor needed it, and I had more hours than I needed, so I gave her that one. So 8 to 10, and then I was going to say 2 to 6, but now that we're opening back up the differential equations, that would be 3.30, you said? Uh, 2.30. I'm sorry, 2.30 to 3.45, so from 3.45 to 6. So I'll change that, 3.45 to 6. Okay, that'll be Tuesday. On Thursday, on, on Monday, on Tuesdays, 8 to 8.30 is correct, because I have a free calculus algebra class at 8.30. But my trick class was canceled and moved to evening on the Birmingham campus. So from 9.45 until... Till 11:30, uh, I have office hours. At 11:30, my linear algebra class. I think they're still going to let run, so that'll be 11:30 until 12:45. Uh, I'll be in class, and then I'm in the office for another 30 minutes before my physical science class starts, and it's a midterm, so it goes until 5:45. So basically, that's it for Tuesday and Thursday, 8 to 8:30. 9.45 until 11.30. That's all on, on Tuesday and Thursday. Now, Wednesday's a lot like Monday, except uh, the 8 to 10 is still good, okay? But since we get out of that class at 3.45, I will leave as soon as I can get away after that class. No. Yeah, because I got a physics class on the Birmingham East Campus that runs from 4.30 to 6.30. So I'll be leaving here as soon as I can get out of the 3.35. Uh, so it won't be that part. Here, 3.30, no, 3.45 until 6, I'll have office hours. If not then, I'll be on, on my way to learn on East Campus. Okay, Thursdays, just like Tuesdays, 8 to 8.30, 9.45 until 11.30. And that's all. Now, second mini term, those will change a little bit, but I'll talk about those in a second. Fridays, I don't have any classes there, so I'm on the Birmingham West Campus uh, in the B building uh, from 8 to 12. Now, they love calling meetings on Fridays, so I can't guarantee I'll be in the office this time, but again, call this number or the other number, but don't leave messages to either one because I won't hear those messages. So hang up, call back, see what's going on. Yeah. Okay, course description. Now, this is not something that I or anyone else here at the college came up with. This was done by a committee, basically, of two-year colleges and the state-supported four-year universities and colleges. And they said, if we teach this, they will give you credit for it. This is the third of three of the basic uh, calculus sequence. Uh, topics include vector functions. Hang on to that notion. Functions of two or more variables, partial derivatives, including applications, quadric surfaces, hang on to that concept a bit, multiple integration, 
in vector calculus. Now, up here, it was vector functions, and down here it's vector calculus, okay? Two slightly different things. Uh, and this includes Green's theorem, Perl and the Burgess, surface integrals, and Stokes theorem. Prerequisite, Cal 2, basically. Now, <clears throat> what book did you use at Jeff's day? Oh, Probably was wasn't Larson, was it? Ron Larson? Yeah, it was familiar, but it was online. It was on the website. Oh, okay. So it gave you... Uh, it may be this one. Basically, okay. videos to watch, too, so... Okay. Okay, well then the odd, I mean, it's, this is a great book, and uh, uh, Bill doesn't like it all that much, but uh, it, it's, it's one of the better of the current books out there that um, I've taught from, in the fact that it does have, um, this author has LarsonCalculus.com, a website you can go to and have all sorts of information. He has one called calcchat.com, which has the odd number of exercises in it, and calcview.com that has selected other problems that goes into more detail. Does that sound about right? It's similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, did you like using WebAssign? Uh, I did, because a lot of them they had video with the exact right. problem on it, but I mean, I'm going to look at other videos anyway. Right. Well, the ScoutChat and ScoutView.com actually has the odd number of exercises. Of it. Well, not the ScoutChat has all the odd number of exercises. Uh, now, it can give you a false sense of security because they're working them all out. But you can see the exercises, then sort of ignore the video, work them out, and then go and look at the video and see if you got it right. So you can do a lot of the same thing for all the odd number of exercises in the whole text. Okay, so it's uh, pretty good that way. Uh, but it's not a Thomas, is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, he and I both grew up on Thomas. Calculus. Okay. So, well, here I'm talking about the textbook already. Let me scroll up. Boo! That does it every time. Irritates the fool out of me. Okay. The textbook, they say is required, but there's enough that it's Calculus by Larson and Edwards, as you'll see here. So uh, this is the same. Cengage. It is Cengage, but, but, but Cengage has several different authors. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't know for sure if it was this one, okay? Uh, but if you've got a book already, I mean, do you, are you, is it already in your... I don't have a physical one. No, I, I know, but I mean, do they let you use the same book term after term, or do you have to reapply and pay only off? If you, only if you know... Right. Well, so you would normally, even if you're at Jeff State, you would purchase, oh. had to purchase again this term. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, what you can do if you want to do it here, you can go to there for dollar, hundred ninety nine, uh, dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You can do the same thing here. And if you really like the the uh, web assign, I can. I have to get a code. You, yeah, I think I have to get a code for you to access WebAssign, don't I? Okay. okay. If I do, let me know and I'll get the code. The Cengage is usually somewhat slow in doing that, so I wasn't sure if the class was going to make it, so I haven't done that yet. So let me know if you do need it. Okay. So this is the book. Now, we'll use this book this term and at least next term, but beginning with Cal 1 this term, if the books will order them, we're going to the other calculus book by Larson, and I think Edwards too, and it's the one, Bill, that I let you have a copy of early, but you said you wanted to do the other one. Uh, it incorporates uh, transcendental functions in the text rather than having separate chapters on it. And uh, so it's, everything else is the same except that. So some of the chapter numbers are different and exercises are a little bit different. So we're going to that beginning this fall with Cal 1, but the Cal 2 and 3 are going to continue in what you have before. So you know all about Cengage. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I really don't like that we're advertising for them. <laughs> I don't think that's our job, but they make us put this in. So hopefully you've seen this. You can go and read it. Uh, by the way, as I said, 
the syllabus is not on Blackboard because I haven't gotten it updated because I wasn't even sure the class was going to run. But here's all the courses here that we offer that use Cengage books and all blah, blah, blah on this. So finally, let's get to Blackboard, okay? Now this is a statement they say we have to run. I don't like much about this, but here it is. All courses must use, and this sort of dumb, the courses don't use Blackboard. You know, the courses may incorporate Blackboard and stuff like that. But all courses must use Blackboard to gain access, but courses don't gain access. It should be students, but anyway. Uh, to gain access to final course information, such as the syllabus, and you will read the syllabus every day, won't you? But never mind. Um, handouts, PowerPoint, uh, shows, activities, assignments, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, I don't have it out there yet. As soon as I can, I'm going to get the syllabus out there. Now, in Blackboard, are you familiar with the you know, use of just like this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's groups of, when you go to the home page for this course, you'll see a set of blue tabs on the left, okay? And they're in little groups, about seven or eight per group or something like that, five to ten, whatever it is. In the first group, somewhere down there about the third or fourth one says something like course information. That's probably not the exact word, but you click on that and that's where the syllabus will be. It's not there yet. And the one right below that says something like instructor information. And that's where I'm going to put what they call a locator card that shows when I'm on campus, off campus, in class, out of class, lunch, or whatever. So I'll put that there. You'll see it later, but it's not up to date yet, so I don't have it out there yet. That's in the first group. The rest of them, I don't know what those are there for. Okay, I don't use them. Then the next group, there's one that says something like, Something handout PPTs and stuff like that. That's where handout PowerPoints and stuff like that go. That's somewhere in that second group. And there is where I'll put the research paper assignment. Yay, you think I wish I had gone here. But uh, there is a paper due. It's not a major thing. Uh, but there is a paper. And uh, I'll also put all the PowerPoints out there. I will also put some websites that either I found or students have found and said they found useful. So I'll put those there. And then I'll also have that link to the YouTube videos. And it'll be there. Uh, none of that is there yet. As soon as I can sit down at my desk without having to deal with registration issues, I'll try to get that done. I would say this afternoon, but now I've just added a class this afternoon. So I may not have as much time this afternoon as I thought. So anyway, that would be there. So the syllabus will be there. It's not there yet. Handouts like the research paper instructions, they'll be there. PowerPoint shows will actually be there in two ways. Number one, I'll have the static PowerPoints, just like I did off this, uh, my um, flash drive, which I copied from the website. But then, too, under the YouTube videos, I teach from the PowerPoint, so you'll get to hear, see, and hear an active version of the PowerPoint shows through the YouTube videos. Activities, sometimes the school puts activities there. Most of the time, I don't put anything there. Assignments, well, the research paper assignment will be there, but all the rest of them will be there through YouTube. Because when I'm doing through YouTube and come to the end of a section, I'll say, here are the homework assignments from here. Or when I get to the end of class, I'll go back to the, I'll go to the homework and say, okay, you can do this one through this one through this one and that will be the homework assignments. I don't type them in or anything else because it varies day to day, and I just don't take time to do that. Okay, so it will be there through the YouTube videos. Okay, announcements, sometimes the school posts announcements through Blackboard. Most of the time I don't unless something comes up like I have a doctor's appointment or something like that. But most of the time, I'm going to have told you about that anyway in the video through the YouTube video. But if some emergency type situation comes up, there's a really good chance if it was really an emergency, I don't have time to oh, I'm so stupid to wait for the computer. I need to type in an announcement on Blackboard. Probably not. Okay, so uh, hopefully there'll be no emergency. So. This sentence I find ingratiating, so what? 
Failure to use black will severely damage your ability to pass the course. Now that may be true in some courses, but in mine, I would say the proper use of blackboard could enhance your ability to do well in the course. I think that's more accurate. And then this next statement I don't like particularly well either. Students should always check blackboard announcements and task pages prior to coming to class. Why would they put that sentence in there? Only reason I could is you put a comma here in case the instructor has canceled class. And I'm not planning to cancel class. Did I cancel any this summer? Last spring? Yeah, I don't need to cancel classes. So I'll try to be here. It's going to have to be a pretty major emergency for me not to be here. And then I probably won't have a chance to put the announcement there. Okay. So anyway, that's just my little gripe about the statement. But they don't let us change that statement. All right. Here are the course student learning outcomes that we hope you get from it. And if you were paying attention to the course description, they come right from that. Except they're not quite in the same order. So I think I'll go rather than the book, I'll go to the table of contents in the book. And I'll point out to you, the first thing we hit is quadric surfaces. That's in section, chapter 11, section 11.6, surfaces in space. That's where we begin, one little section there. Students will work with and perform calculus operations on vector functions, compute arc length, speed, curvature, describe motion in three space. Okay? That's chapter 12, vector valued functions. That was the first thing mentioned in the course description. Okay? Students will work with functions of several variables, compute limits, take partial derivatives, applying them to tangent planes, gradients, directional derivatives, and chain rule. That was the second two objects, the, the second and third objects mentioned in the uh, course description, uh, functions of several variables and partial derivatives. Okay? Students will perform multiple integration techniques and apply them. That's chapter 14, multiple integration. And then students will perform multiple integration techniques. Oops, said that. Students will perform line and surface integrals, applying them to Green's theorem, Slick's theorem, and Divergence theorem. That's the vector analysis or vector calculus, as what it said in the uh, course description. That's chapter 15. Okay? So that's it. Okay? Now, the question is, are we going to get all that covered? There's a good chance no. Okay? Because this is a lot to cover. Uh, the chapter uh, 12 is five sections, but they're pretty hefty sections. And by the way, uh, 11, 6, and 12 will be combined. That will be your first test, by the way. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay? 13 has 10 sections in it. Obviously, we're not going to call, cover 10 sections in depth. Uh, we'll cover maybe eight of them pretty thoroughly, and then I'll just give you PowerPoint shows on the next two. We won't require those for testing. Chapter 14, eight sections there, okay? We probably won't get to all of them, but we'll get as far as we can. Um, so, and then chapter 15, uh, we'll just get wherever we can. I have not been able to finish 15 yet, but this looks like an outstanding class, so maybe we'll make it this way. We'll see. All right, and then that last little thing, students will research and write on the topic uh, or computer application in calculus. Okay, I'll give you that research paper instructions a little bit later. So, how how do we deal with these student learning outcomes? Here are the competencies. Okay, eleven point six is quadric surfaces, like I already said. Chapter twelve, at least. Yeah, I'll try to do all five sections of that, uh, and that would be your next. That's number two. But then we'll wait and do the test on these six sections, uh, one from 11, five from 12. That would be one test. So the 11, six will be in the first test. Okay? And chapter 13, functions of several variables, that includes partial derivatives and stuff like that. That will be a test at that one. Now, we're not going to do 10 sections that are probably tested on eight of those sections. Chapter 14, multiple integration. We probably won't get all eight sections done, but we'll get as many as we can uh, and test you on that. And then vector analysis, again, 
if we can get that far, we'll go as far as we can, and that'll be your final test. Okay. Now, <clears throat> writing competency will be your research paper. Okay. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So how do I evaluate this? Well, your everybody has the research paper is required. It's not an optional thing. It used to be, I think SAC still pushes it, uh, they want writing across the curriculum. <clears throat> so I do have this. It's not as major as an English paper. It's not a major uh, research uh, what would you call it? A course in research writing. Okay, We're not doing that. I just want you to get out of the book into the real world, at least sort of step and toe out into the real world anyway. Find some Thing. We'll talk about that a little bit later, okay? But that's required. Cannot be dropped. A chapter test or a unit test will be given after each chapter. 11.6 will go with chapter 12, but uh, that would be one unit. And the lowest chapter test score may be dropped, but not the last one. Whatever the last test we do, it will just be a chapter test, but it will really be incorporating everything else we've done. So it won't be comprehensive, but it will be the last test. That one cannot be dropped. Okay, so the research paper can't be dropped, and the last test can't be dropped. But of the other tests, I will drop your lowest score if it helps you. Okay, I won't drop it if it hurts. Okay, each assessment will be graded on 100 points. Don't plagiarize. Put this in here; they put it later. They must be really big on plagiarism. Don't plagiarize. A's, B's, and C's. That's seven D's and up. Or passing D's and L's and not. Don't go there. Uh, then there's this dumb little statement here, and I don't know, well, we weren't supposed to change it, but I changed it. Here's what it originally read, or the best of my memory. The here's, here's what it originally said. The instructor always rounds up. That's what the statement said. The instructor always rounds up. And then this, that's what it normally said. That, that's what it originally said. For example, a 79.5% will be rounded up to an 80%, which is a B. But a 79.4% would remain a C. Well, that's not rounding up. That's rounding normally. Okay, so I went in and changed it to normally because rounding up would have moved that up to a B2. If you always round up, that would have been an 80. But that's not what she said here, but that's what she said there. So I changed it to a round normally. Okay. Obviously, she's not a math major. Okay, so anyway, we'll leave that one. Okay, they may be listening. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> They're going to watch the video, maybe. <laughs> they wouldn't sit through it. Okay. Okay, attendance. Uh, try to be here. If you can't be here, the video's there. Okay, is that as good as being in class? Try asking the video a question. It won't answer. Okay, so try to be here. Okay, now withdrawals, I used to go into a bit of detail here, and I'm going to change it ever so slightly uh, because of things they've been harping on at us in meetings. What I've always said is if, when it gets near the end of the term and it looks like there's no way in the world you can make a C in the course, it's way better to withdraw than it is to make a D or an F because I'm sure all of you are either math, physics, or pre-engineering majors, except Bill, he's just here for fun, okay? And, uh, and if you are and are on financial aid, then um, financial aid will not, okay, you'll have to retake the course if you make a D or an F, okay? A D hurts your grade point average unless you have a very low grade point average that a D would help. Hopefully none of you are there. I don't think you are. And the F will definitely hurt anybody's grade point average. So a W will not hurt the grade point average at all. You're going to have to repeat the course whether you do a D, F, or uh, W. A W doesn't hurt your grade point average. Duh, take a W rather than a D or an F. But financial aid will pay repay for one retake. If you make a D and have to retake, they'll pay for it. F, you have to retake, they'll pay for it. Or a W, and you retake, you'll have to pay for it. Now, if it's the second retake, they're not going to pay for it, okay? They won't pay for it the third time. 
But look, a D or an F is still going to earth a grade point average where a W will not. So I see no reason not to take a W rather than a D or an F. Okay, but here's the caveat, and I guess I have it. Well, no. they're just saying to everybody. I don't know if coming up there's going to be a camp the college calendar. If there is, I'll point this out to you. But if not, 60% of the way into the term, if you're on financial aid, if you're on financial aid, after 60% into the term, then the course is paid for. If you withdraw before that 60% completion, you have to repay. Or actually, the school has to repay the federal government, then the school tries to get you to repay the school. Okay, You don't want to go there. It's a hassle. Okay, so if it shows up, I'll point out what date that is. It's going to be next, last summer, but I'll, I'll tell you where it shows up. Okay, lateness policies. We're going to try to start classes at, what is this, 12.15? Yeah, and I'll try to be ready to go every day. I have a class right before this one. I'll already be set up, ready to go. Okay. Um, but if you got something coming from the other campus or something like that, I understand, just get here. Okay, academic integrity. Let me make this real short and sweet as much as I can anything. I'm not short on anything, but academic integrity, what I would say is have it, practice it, exercise it, okay? It's a good thing, okay? Let's talk about the specific plagiarism. Don't do it, okay? Don't do it. Cheating, don't do it, okay? At this level where you are, guess what? It doesn't help you at all. When you get in your upper level classes, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so don't do either one of those. All right. Now this next one. Professional decorum. I guess I would say do it. Okay. Uh, though it seems sort of almost ludicrous to be saying this in a to adults in an adult class, but let's go on and say what we can. All right. The main thing here is be considerate of your fellow students. That's what I would say. Texting and other unauthorized internet use, the odds are you're going to be bothering somebody else, you know, distracting or whatever. Don't do it. Sleeping, please don't snore, okay? If you're snoring very loudly, it'll bother other students, okay? I don't care. I mean, don't. <laughs> I sort of say this as a joke, but I did have one student last year sometime. He actually fell asleep back there, and he was sawing logs. People across the room <laughs> said, what is that noise? And everybody was laughing. I think he finally woke up, but you know, I tried to keep on teaching. But you see, it does bother other people. And none of you, I don't think, will speak out of turn or your own time in. Don't do it. That's distracting. It, dis it disrupts people's trains of thought. They get upset. Don't do it. Uh, unnecessary traffic in and out of the classroom. These classes go an hour and 40 minutes. Sometimes my bladder doesn't go an hour and 40 minutes, so if you need to go, we can stop. You know, the whole group on the show, only four of us at most. And, or you can just go yourself. It doesn't matter. Eating or drinking, if you spill it, or make a mess, you're going to clean it up. That's all. Yeah, now, if you're really eating some good smelling stuff, bring it up for everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm not big on that. I'd rather you be able to focus. So if you need some caffeine, take some caffeine. If you're starving and your stomach's growling so loud, quiet me. You know, eat something. I don't care. I just say wear clothing. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't. You guys, I can't even. I don't even want to imagine what inappropriate clothing would be for you, so let's not even go there. Okay? Sunglasses, I don't care. You know, if that's helped you sleep, I have no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'd say that because my dad used to joke about a friend of his who sang in the choir at church, and he said, I wondered for a while why he wore sunglasses, then I found out. Okay? <laughs> anyway, we won't go there either. Okay. Uh, hat, I don't care. Earphones, you know, they can be distracting, especially if they're making noise that somebody around you is distracted. Don't do anything distracting. And if your hat gets in the way, if they got flowers and, and plumes and things like this, don't wear them. Uh, you got, 
Yeah, okay, Lee lives at home. Okay, right. Okay, I'll bother the people who say goodbye. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we won't. We probably did way more there than we should have. Uh, course concern. Now, that's things that you could be doing to bother others, but what if you're getting bothered? That you think, I'm not giving you a fair shake or not giving you, letting you be heard, anything like this, let me know, and we'll try to straighten it out. If I'm making inappropriate, uh, unnecessary jokes or wasting time in class, let me know, and we'll stop, uh, or at least cut back. Okay? Then, if you're not successful there, go see the department chair, and we'll talk again, because I'm the department chair. Okay? So, <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do that. If that doesn't work, we'll go to the associate dean, my boss, or the dean, his boss, or the vice president, her boss, or the president, his boss. We'll go as far as it takes, but I'll talk to you. So that's the first one. So let's settle it. Please let me know if there's anything that I do that's distracting to you. Let us know. There's our website. You can go to it. Complaint process. Uh, there's a, this formal what is it? Concern complaint. Blah, blah, quick, you know, you can go to this website and find the links to get you there. I'll try to help you, but I'm not going to, you're all the better at searching things like that than I am. Okay, now, here's something I am very serious about. Discrimination, harassment, I usually put in here, bullying. Okay, we do not want this to happen at all, period. Oh, either campus. So, most of the time, no one's going to do this in front of me. So I'm probably not going to know this. You may see it. If you do see it or even suspect it, let us know about it. We want to nip it in the proverbial bud. We give people fair hearings and all like this, but we don't want it happen here, and we don't stop it. Now, I hate to give this as an example, but it is fresh on my mind. Friday afternoon when I was trying like crazy to go through all this capsuling classes and moving people around and all this kind of stuff. Just in the middle of it, here came one of my instructors and she had a few things and we dealt with those. And then uh, I may have asked her or something else, or she said something about wanting to teach this at a lower level, teach the labs that went with the course, you know, the tutorials, the, they call them co-rec labs. Um, and earlier, she had asked for this one adjunct particularly to do some of her labs, okay? And then the next term, she said, I want to do my own labs. No, I don't want him doing them anymore. So I said, fine. So I put her down for her own labs. And then she came in and something came up and she said, no, she had been by down the hallway when he was doing the lab, either her class or somebody else's, and he was talking about not math stuff, but she did, wasn't specific, but it was something that was very inappropriate. Uh, something sexual. And she could tell by looking at some of the, especially the females in the room, that they were very uncomfortable. The expressions on their faces, their body language, and she said, I don't want him doing any of mine anymore. I thought, why didn't I hear about this sooner? <laughs> okay, because we had just put them down for two classes and some labs. And so no sooner had uh, she left the room, within 15 minutes, the phone rang and it was a dean. And she was helping me capsule classes and do things like this. And we talked about some issues there. And right before the end of the call, I said, by the way, I've just heard this. And she said, oh no, I've talked with him twice before, or more than once about this. What? <laughs> you know? And so then when, over the weekend, there was an email, I'd seen it earlier, but I hadn't had time to answer it, but it was from him. And I and then answered his question in the email and said, by the way, I heard this, it wasn't specific, so I don't know what, except just in general. This has no place in any of our classes, in any of our labs. We have enough to do to teach math. We don't need to be talking about anything that's inappropriate outside of this. I copied the dean on it because I had mentioned her name. 
she said he had, she had spoken to him more than once, and so she saw the email. So she thought she had to email him too to say she was supporting me. And I don't know if y'all know how things work. You can't really dismiss anyone unless you have adequate documentation and all this little. Now don't do this anymore. You know and this kind of stuff. But if it's not documented, it's not there. Okay. So that's why I put it in writing, and she put it in writing on emails, and that counts. Uh, so maybe we could have got rid of it on the spot, but the trouble is we just didn't have any more information. So anyway, we deal with it. Not as quickly sometimes as I think we should, but we do deal with it. All right, so that's where we stand on that. That's not really discrimination and harassment, but it's something that's making students uncomfortable. We don't want it to happen here. And we sure don't want discrimination, harassment, or bullying. Now, another thing I'm pretty sensitive about is Americans with disability. Notice I say, have you repeat something in time or two? I'm hard of hearing. Okay, so this is something sort of close to me. Um, we want you to have every opportunity to learn as much as you can. So if you have a disability, please let somebody know about it. You don't have to tell me. We have professionals here on campus. Dr. Renee Herdman is the head of the Office of Disability Services. She's located on this campus. And then on the Birmingham campus, Ms. Janine McCoy-Jones is a counselor over there who can handle things uh, on that campus. So go to the website, find out, bring your information in, take it to her. You bring it to me, I'm going to take it to her, you know, because I can't do anything with it, but she can. And then they'll get back to us what we need to do to give you every chance to take advantage of what we're offering. Any questions? Okay. Hi, here's the course calendar. Of course, this was last summer, because this is up to date. Notice here, 60% completion date, that was for July 3rd. For a full term class, that's going to be, it's going to be always past midterm, because <coughs> that's about 50%. So sometime in the week or two after midterm will be the 60%. That's when if you're on financial aid and you're going to uh, withdraw from a course, do it. Notice here the last day to withdraw is in the summer was a good three weeks later. So you have a three week window. Following spring, probably four, four or five weeks, okay, close to a month or something like that. So you have plenty of time. If you're paying your own way, you can withdraw anytime you want to. It doesn't matter. We've already got your money. We don't care, okay? But federal government paid the money. They're going to come after us. we got to go after them. So that's up to you. All right. I'll get this updated before I put the solos out there. Any questions? The very last thing is this. Uh, once I get it out there on Blackboard, if you'll acknowledge that you've received it, you've read it, you understand it, you've had opportunity to ask questions, you can either type your name and date and email it to me, or you can print it out, sign your name, and give it to me. Either one you want to. It's not there yet. As soon as I can get it there, I'll let you know. I also try to get the Blackboard thing done. I mean, the uh, Cengage thing done. Any questions at all on the syllabus? Okay. Sorry, that probably took way longer than it should have. Okay, let's first do our research paper. Oh, too much. All right. Two of you have heard this before, probably if you have it, so I'll go over it quickly if possible. I don't do many things quickly. Choose any topic within the scope of the course. Uh, it could be a person, and you might think, well, what person? Well, if you were paying attention, you probably saw Stokes theorem mentioned at least a time or two. Who in the world was Stokes? Or what was the theorem about? Or how do you apply this? I mean, anything such as that. A theorem, there was a theorem, the divergence theorem, the Carl theorem. We mentioned several of those in the course description. Okay? A phenomenon. Okay? Uh, for instance, what is described through the use of calculus? Okay? Um, sources and sinks, you know, a variety of things like that. Uh, application. Oh, I like those kind of papers. Uh, many years ago, there was a guy from Jeff State, in fact. He lived. McCall, I believe, so he drove past us, going to and from Jeff State every day he went to school, 
and he, I guess, had trouble in some of his math courses there. This was years ago. And so he decided, let me try doing my math here. So he came and he was taking trig. Sat right back there on the desk right there. And he was a pre-forestry major. And he had to write his paper. He wrote his paper on the use of trigonometry in forestry. And you might say, is there a use of trigonometry in forestry? I don't think so. Absolutely. If a forester is going out there estimating on a stand of trees, particularly sort of an average tree, and is going to estimate its height, you think he's going to take his tape measure and nail it to the ground and climb the tree and see how tall it is? I hope not. Okay? What he's going to do, he has a sextant, and he was going to get on a good level place, eye the top of the tree or the top of where he can get useful lumber, measure the angle, take the tangent, you know, because he knows in this, yeah, right there. He wrote a paper, I may not have been the best paper I've ever read, but I really liked it because it was an application of what he was doing in this classroom and what he wanted to do in the real world. So I love those kind of papers. It doesn't have to be that direct, but any, okay? Any other topic about which you have an interest, okay? And then I put this in a few years later, a few years ago, uh, or it can be an internet application or a demonstration which you find useful to the class. So for instance, what if we're talking about the divergence theorem? And you, the book is what? And my explanation of it is what? You know, but you find a YouTube video or something like this that goes over it, explains it, and you say, oh, that's what it means, okay? Or anything else like that, if you want to write on that. You know, just an example. What it is you couldn't understand from the book or from me, okay? Uh, what was confusing to you? Where you looked elsewhere, you know, I went to these sites and couldn't get much help here and here and here. But what was it about this site that made it the light come on, okay? And then maybe, oh, I wish. They could have gone a little bit further, you know, and stuff like this. So easily you can come up with a page or two on that internet application demonstration. So if you find something like that, you can certainly do that as well. Now what I'd like you to do is in today or this week or next week, write your name and the topic you've selected on a piece of paper to return it to me. Now that seems like a huge waste of paper, doesn't it? So that way if you get yours in, then the other two guys... They can't use that same topic. Okay, first come, first serve, or choose your cousin or whatever. Okay, now, since that's a lot, a very little to write on a whole piece of paper, I want you to get the most out of your paper. If you want to also, give me your very best phone number, you can do that. Now, the reason I say this, I'm not going to be calling you, you know, necessarily, but periodically, and this does happen, not very frequently, but it does happen, that I'll get a panic phone call from the registrar's office or from somebody saying, I've got a you know, sort of emergency thing came in for this and so, the number in the system, I can't reach them. Do you have a better number? I notice he's in your Cal 2 class. And if I do, I can give it to him. I'm not going to give it to another student. I'm not going to give it to Joe Blow from the street. I'll only do it if there's some emergency that's come up and someone needs to get in touch with me. So you can give me your very best phone number if you want to. You don't have to. I don't have to have it, but if you want to write something else on the piece of paper, you can do that. Now, my guess is that very best phone number is probably going to be for somebody who's a cell phone. Okay? And if there's a chance that that cell phone may be battery died, you didn't pay your service and it got discontinued, you got run over by a car, you left it at home or left it in the car or something like that, and no one can get in touch with you on your cell phone, if you want to leave, a good backup number that someone can get in touch with you, like Mama's landline or something like that, you can do that if you choose. I don't need it, but if you want to choose, you can. Or I'm guessing maybe some of you might work. And if you do work, and you happen to work at a place that doesn't want you using your cell phone or receiving cell phone calls, but they will take a call at the switchboard for you and get in touch with you if you want to give me your work number. I can't think of any other number I could possibly give somebody like that. So if you want to give me no numbers, one, two, or up to three numbers, you can do that on that same piece of paper. It has nothing to do with the paper topic, but just to use up more paper. Okay. So that's up to you. All right.
You'll need to find at least one, but two or more are better, outside sources for your paper. Okay, now what is an outside source? It can be any book, journal, article, newspaper, magazine, anything that you could find in the library, either this library or any library. Or, and this is the big word here, legitimate source found on the internet. Okay? The internet has to be, in my mind, probably the greatest invention that's ever happened during my lifetime. Because in 1951, I don't think it existed, and it is an amazing thing today. Okay? Amazing. Okay? Two big problems with it. Maybe more than two, but two I'm thinking of right now. Number one, at least half of what's on it, I think way more than half of what's on it, is total garbage. Okay? And the second is sometimes you don't know which half. Okay? So, be sure that you it is a legitimate source on the internet if you use the internet. And there's some uh, classes and instructions don't even allow you that. I don't mind if it's legitimate. Okay? If you have any doubt, run it by me. If I've never heard of it, it sounds totally ludicrous, I'd say find something else. Or if I look at it and say, oh yeah, yeah, you can find it, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay, the textbook is not a source for your paper. It can be a great source of ideas for your paper, like theorems, people, places. There'll be, in many of the sections, some body feature, you know. You can use any of those features. You can't use what the book writes about them, but you can go to an outside source and get it. So it's a great source for ideas, but it's not a source for your paper. Paper must be at least one word process page of text. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. If you choose a format, and you can choose any format you want to, that has some sort of header at the top, I don't know what, and then skips a few lines and has a title and triple spaces and start typing right here, a page of text will go from here to the bottom of the page, and then on the second piece of paper, start at the top and come down at least that far. That's a page of text. It's going to be at least two pieces of paper, but I want at least one page of text. Okay? Uh, I want it double space. This is single space. This is hard for me to grade, mark, and stuff like this. Double space. So, yeah, you don't have to write as much, do you? Okay? That's fine. Okay? Uh, standard font, 12 pitch or 12 point. Anything too small is hard for me to read. Anything too big, you're just 26 points, five words will fill a page. No, that's not going to count as your paper. Okay. I don't care what font you use as long as it's readable. Uh, Times New Roman is just about everybody's default. This happens to be Arial. There's just tons and tons of great fonts out there that are good readable fonts. I don't read hieroglyphics and Old English and, you know, Latin, Cyrillic, or whatever you know. So keep it in a standard font. Try to keep your paper less than two pages. Uh, that's not a requirement. I'm just saying this isn't supposed to be onerous. It's supposed to be short and sweet. I like it sweet, you know. Short is fine too, okay? If you get so interested in your subject matter and you go more than two pages, I think that's great. I'm not going to count off points for that, okay? Go on, write as much as you like. You're learning something. That's good. That's what it's all about. But I have had, and I can only think of maybe two instances, and I've been doing this for, I'm saying, well over probably way more than 15 years. And usually have, I've taught every term that I've been here and uh, since I started doing this. And I've usually had anywhere from four or five to up to eight classes a term. And not usually this few of people in a class, but more like 15 to 20. Never a 40, I don't think. Maybe one term out of 40. But I've seen a lot of papers. And I can only think of at least twice where this has happened. That someone has decided, you know, I know I'm not writing a very good paper, so I'm going to make it long to impress it. It won't. Okay? And let me tell you why. When I start your paper, you hand it in to me. It's a 100-point paper. Okay? Then as I start reading it, you start possibly losing points if you find errors, if I find errors. I can hear you now say, well, don't read it, don't read it. No, I'm going to read it. If you do the effort of turning it in, I'm going to make the effort of reading it. So if you turn in a good paper, whether it's 
one and a half pages, two pages, five pages. This is a good paper. I'm going to enjoy reading that paper. But if it's a very sloppy paper and you've just made it longer, guess what? The more I read, the more errors I find, the more points you're losing. So please don't substitute quantity for quality. Give me quality. It can be quantity if you want, but give me quality. Okay. So, um, you will lose points if the paper is less than one page. There's no penalty for being longer than two pages unless it's a really lousy paper. Then it may lose more points. Okay. Any standard format, I don't care. Most English classes teach MLA, Modern Language Association. Uh, that's sort of their standard. A lot of scientific organizations like APA, which is the American Psychological Association, they came up with a format early on that people said, boy, I can't cop this, I'm going to use theirs, you know, or any. I've member, been a member of many professional organizations that seems like every one of them has their own format. My wife is a researcher at UAB, and she writes papers for New England Journal, JAMA, you know, all these different publications, epidemiologies, society, blah, blah, blah. And every one of them, it seems like, has their own format. And she has these computer programs that will take this and just put them into the format, you know, that they have them available. I don't have anything like that. Pick your format and stay with it. Please be consistent, okay? For instance, if you start blocking paragraphs, block all your paragraphs. Believe it or not, I've had people that after two or three paragraphs start indenting. Or they indent the first couple and then and then this one over here, you know, just not being consistent. So please follow a format. Now, even more important than that, I've had people that up here, they make a reference to one of their articles, you know, one of their sources, okay? And they may put uh, the author's last name, comma, year of publication, close parenthesis, and go, oh, that's fine, okay? But then down here, they make another reference to a different one, same type of a a book or a journal or whatever, same type, but they are open parentheses, title of the off, comma, page number. Wait a minute. Okay, now if these are different things, like one a journal article and one something else, yeah, you have different format. But if it's the same thing, what has happened? Well, I think I know what happened. In this one, they followed the format of this one, and in this one down here was a different source, they followed its format. Hey, you pick your format, and then you be consistent. Okay, that doesn't happen often, but I have seen it happen occasionally. Okay, so that's what I mean, be consistent. Choose your format and follow the rules of your format. Okay, spelling, grammar, sentence structure, all that kind of stuff, if it's wrong, if it's errors, they'll count off. Okay, now, I'm not an English teacher, so I'm probably not going to count as much as some of them doing some things that they are really picky about. But content also matters. To me, this is even more important. Uh, I'll give you some dumb examples of this, um, especially in lower level courses. I've read dozens of papers about Pythagorean theorem, and they're fine. That's a great topic and stuff, but I've had some that they state the theorem incorrectly. <laughs> okay, well, ah, I know this, you know, and I know that's not right. Or, this is even worse, not worse, but dumber, at the first Thing, when they first mention this person they're writing on, the open parentheses gives the date of the year of his birth, year of his death. So they said, yeah, it's sort of a standard stuff. But then over on page two, at the end of it, they're saying he died in, in dying in a different year from what they did on page one. I said, it was a bit longer paper, so it, it couldn't have been. Yeah, be consistent. You know, pay attention to what you're doing. Another one, uh, something about, it seems like I've seen Tons of paper of Isaac Newton, which is a great topic, you know, perfectly fine. But I had, you know, one paper had him doing something in 1947, when I think it was 1497, you know, or something like that. They, they exchanged two numbers that were pretty obviously wrong, so content also matters. That's all I'm getting at. Now, when is the paper due? The last day of class, okay? That doesn't mean the last day of primers. The last day we're in here as a class, and that probably, oh, I didn't say this when I was going through the syllabus, so I need to ask y'all this question. Do you prefer in-class tests or take-home tests? 
Really? We're going to swap a shot. Okay. No, it depends on how you. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, guy, this, this guy has, is clever, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Your takeoff test will probably be more extensive than in class, but they also will measure what you know better. Because, you know, to me, it's, it's hard, hard to do it. Sorry. Huh? Sorry. It's hard to do it in the two hour period. Yeah. yeah. They do more than like 10 problems. Yeah. Perfectly. That you hit the nail on the head. If it's a good test, it's going to be hard to do, and we don't even have to take two hours. It's an hour and 40 minutes, okay? So I either have to water down the test and make them so they're not really measuring very much or give you a fair representation of what we've covered. And but here is even that's that's all true, but here's the other thing. If you were working for me and I had a problem, and I go to you uh, and say, solve this problem, you know fix this, you know, determine what's wrong, what the answer is. I don't want you sitting, okay, let's see what I can memorize here and do the, the, that's not what I want, you know, I would want you to go look up, find out what the correct formula, equation, thing, figure out which one's appropriate, how do you do it, how do you use it, how do you come up with the best answer, not what you've memorized. I'm not a memorizer, and to me, that's not a measure of much except how good you memorize. And I think to be able to apply, to find out, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I can pre engineering is all about. I'm guessing most of you are pre engineers, right? So to me, that's a fair way to measure. And you're right, the problems will be a little more extensive, but they're not going to be onerous. Okay. In fact, I shoot for usually 10 questions, you know, period. But they're, I uh, hopefully cover the material. Okay. So, but it may be not something you would want to do in an hour and 40 minutes. Okay. You wouldn't have that long. Okay. So, I threw that in where I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess it was the final. That's what it brought to the mind. Because on the last day of class, I will be giving you your last test. Whatever we covered up to that point, I'll give you that last test, and that's that. Your paper has to be in before that, okay? Because I don't want to be grading papers and finals at the same time. Basically, reason for this. So get your papers in earlier, okay? You will lose points after if you turn in your paper during finals week. In fact, after the last day of class, uh, that's the stick. Here's the carrot. Okay, and this is what I've got to change with this. If you turn in your paper in this month, in the month of August, you're going to get four bonus points added to your score. Whatever your score in your paper was, I just add four points to it. Turn it in the month of September, three bonus points. October, two bonus points. November, one bonus point. Turn it in December, which is last week or so before finals, you just get your score. After that last day of class, you start losing points. So you'll start going the other way. So there's the carrot and the stick. Okay. Um, the other thing is if you wait till the end of the term, you're going to have lots of projects, tests, presentations, not in this class, but in other classes. So don't wait. That's why I try to encourage you to get it done early by your Okay. All right. Here's something I require that very few others, uh, maybe no one else does. When you submit your paper, please copy or print me a single page, a single page from one of your sources. If you had three sources, pick a source, any source, and then pick a page, any page, turn me in what page with your source. That's just so if I ever need it, I can go, I have a physical thing of that, I can go look it up if I'm having to look up. Yeah. It also let me know whether you type words the word off of the page. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so anyway, there's several reasons I do that. Okay, any questions on the paper? Okay, I'll get those months corrected there and the number of points and uh, get this out there.
has my information. Here I put that 649 number, which I think is what the one is on the Birmingham campus on Fridays, but if you don't get that, the 6377 works for this. They're all nine to nine numbers. All right. Any questions? All right. That's it for this for today. Now let's go over. Now this is just what the faculty locator card looks like, though the information on here is not correct. Obviously, this is summer 2019. That's not this summer. But my name's correct. My phone number's correct. And uh, there I have my office number here. Uh, you can write down the other one if you want to. Uh, my email address is correct. And uh, I'm in the math department, though I do teach science courses as well. Okay, here is when I'm on campus, off campus, in class, out of class, at lunch, whatever. Now, this is the summer. I'll tell you right now what it is now. I'm in usually before 8 every morning. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, 8 to 10 is free. I lost my uh, uh, Math 100 class. Another instructor needed it. I had plenty of classes, so I gave it to her. 10 o'clock, I have Cal 2. It goes from 10 to 11.40. And then I have a few minutes uh, before 12.15, from 11.40 to 12.15, about half hour in between classes. Um, then this class starts at 12.15 and goes to 1.55 and then I'll have a few minutes in between there till 2.30. Is that when uh, differential equations start? So that 2.30 until uh, this is some of the calculus classes were very long. Um, that goes 2.30 to 3.45. So from 3.45 until 6 o'clock, office hours there. There's 30 minutes here, little bits and pieces there, and uh, this is whatever. There. Okay. All right. That's Monday. Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday are exactly the same. Uh, 8 to 10, I'm sorry, 8 to 8.30, office hours, then I've got a fiscal uh, pre-calculus out of the class 112, uh, 8:30 until 9:45. My trig class, which canceled, moved to the other campus, so I'm free from 9:45 until 11:30. That's when uh, linear algebra starts. If it's still make, it will be a linear algebra here from 11:30 to 12:45, and then I've got maybe 45 minutes. No, 30 minutes until 1.15. Uh, that's when my physical science class starts. And it's a mini term class with a lab. So it goes to 3.45. So, I mean, 5.45. So that's it. He's good. and Thursday. Wednesday, just like Monday, with the following exception. 8 to 10, then the little bits and pieces here, but as soon as I get out of class at 345, shortly thereafter I'll leave to go to the Birmingham campus because this physics class, rather than being two hour class classes in the summer, is one two hour block in the, uh, on Wednesdays in the fall. And spring. So I won't have the block of options I was at the bottom here. Thursday, just like Tuesday, and Fridays, Birmingham West Campus Academic Building in B122. Forget this May and August, that's for Sunday, uh, for summer only, but uh, I'll be there from then. Now I put lunch in here. I usually don't eat a full lunch on Friday, going home sometime after 12. So I usually have, just have a snack, and I don't even have to have that, but they require us to put in when our lunch is. Uh, if you'll notice in the summer, I put lunch down here because I had five minutes in between each of these classes. I had no time for lunch. I didn't eat lunch at the end of the day, but they required us to put it down, so I put it down at the end. So it was a sight gag. Okay. So that's what it'll look like when I get it corrected. I'll put it on Blackboard. All right, any questions? So I don't think I need that anymore today if there are no questions on it. 
Uh, before we get started in real math, there is one other issue that we need to talk about, three subtopics of that, but these you need to have in the back of your brain somewhere, and that's safety. Now, we're not going to be doing anything super unsafe in Cal 3, okay? It's just not. But there could be conditions that could be unsafe. Can anyone think of one of the three major things we have to think about always? Fire, okay? Uh, what happens? Let's get worst case scenario now. Worst case scenario, my computer blows up and starts arcing and sparking, setting the papers on fire, setting the books on fire, setting the desk on fire. What do we do? Extinguish. Okay, where do we find the fire extinguisher? Where is the closest fire extinguisher? There's one right out here. That's very good, folks. I know you guys, probably when you were young, you thought, it's so cool to make that class, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can tell you, I thought that. Okay, so one of you gets to do that. Don't fight, you know, one of you go get it, you know. Uh, so go get the fire extinguisher. That's one good thing to do very early on. That's one thing. What else? Uh, steal that fire. Say again? Steal on the fire. Yeah, steal on the fire. What's that? Okay, you want to get out of the building? That's a very good thing to do. Let the building burn down and everybody else in it. But we're going to get out and see it, right? What else do we need to do? Oh, pull the fire alarm. Of course, we don't want everybody else to solve it because we have the fire alarm. Now, where's the closest fire alarm? Probably beside the. You would think, wouldn't you? But what you see here. <laughs> This is the second floor of this building, building A. What you see here is the old part of the building. Now, this is a little bit newer, but this is the old part of the building. Everywhere within sight of us, it was built before fire alarms were part of the code. There is not a fire alarm on anything you see here. Not zero, not. Fire extinguisher, yes, they put that in on here, but they didn't put in fire alarm. So here's what you do to get the nearest fire alarm. Go out the door here, hang a left, go down this little half flight of stairs here, then go on up here to this corridor, go past the restroom, and there's a corridor that goes across, and it seems a little bizarre that they don't put anything to soy to. So this is the second floor here. You went down half a flight of stairs, but you go across this corridor, you're suddenly on the first floor. Then you go up or down a single step, but you're on the first floor, so there's only one floor here. This is the new part of the building. Now this is sort of new, and it may have a fire alarm, but it's part of the way. If you go through the corridor, through the great double doors there, by the way, if you give you reference, right here is the financial services office. If you went by there, if you go slightly this way or that way, you'll find the fire alarm almost within reach of coming through those doors. But there's the closest fire alarm. Now one of you went to get a fire extinguisher, one of you went to get to pull the fire alarm, okay? What else might we want to do before we head out of the building? Or while we're heading out? Um, yes, okay. Now, actually, the very best number to do, the door I come in, and I take every door into this building, there's a piece of paper there, my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, with the campus police numbers on it. So Birmingham and Bethel. Those are the mobile phones that the duty person has on his or her belt 24-7. Or whenever the folks that are here, they have it on their belt. It's not an office number where someone made a cell phone and dumped it in the restroom. It's on the duty officer's belt. Okay? That is really good. If you go out or in one of those places, pull out your cell phone, key that number in so you can do a dial on it immediately. That's the very best number. If you forget to do that or don't do it, then dial 911. Because you see, our police, they have direct access to 911. They can get it there just as quickly. They can respond sooner than 911. So please do them first if you can. But if you forget that, do 911. Okay, so you've taken care of that. Now we proceed out of the building. Where do we go? What is our best route out of the building? We go out the door here, angle left. Go down 
down this little half line of stairs, right down there, and then immediately at the bottom hang another left and go down one more flight, and then you go out of the building. Now they used to tell us go 75 yard of feet straight out of the building, don't go along the building, because if there's fire, there could be an explosion, blast will be flying out of the building, get away from the building. Now they tell us even more, go down to this parking lot. So here's the building here, here's our corner right up here, we go down this flight, this stairwell that comes up here, go down to that parking lot, and you can see down there, and stay together as a group. It's a very small group, I admit, but stay together as a group. The person who went to do the alarm, you just go on out and you see us going and going out of the building with us. So I'll be up here fighting the fire if it's here. Uh, and then I'll be coming down and I will grab, before it catches on fire, the roll sheet. Okay? And I'll take those down with me and we'll call roll down there. Why? We have to account for every person. And if we don't account for you, if you decide to go see a friend, take off, say, hey, the bill's on fire, no more class today, I'm out of here, and we can't account for you, no one knows where you went, someone has to risk his or her life to go back into the burning building and see if they can locate you. Putting that responder's life in danger. Don't do it. Stay together as a group. Once we account for everybody, then someone will make a decision. Well, there was just one little group, go back, there's no smoke damage, we'll go back. Or, hey, it's pretty major, but we've got plenty of classrooms here, you'll go here, you'll go here. Or, hey, at home, this is enough for today, okay? But wait until we hear what's going on. All right, that's fine, okay? Uh, and by the way, whoever it is who's the last one out, I will be with you, okay? Whoever you have the cane, if it's you, I'll be with you. If you turn an ankle or something like that, and you're on crutches that go past you like crazy. No, you just I'll go, you just go. But I'll be the last one out, this is my point. I may still be fighting the fire with the fire extinguisher. I'll be the last one out with whoever is the last person. So that's that's why you stay out there and wait until I get down there with the rolls. Okay, so there's one safety issue, fire. What's another? So again, tornado is absolutely any kind of weather emergency. It doesn't have to be a tornado. If we hear that alarm go off, by the way, if the alarm, fire alarm goes off, it hasn't started here, we don't have to find the fire extinguisher. We don't have to find the fire alarm. We just get out of the building. So you just pick up and go to the building. Okay. But tornado, if we hear that alarm, what do we do? Okay. Yeah, the first part is exactly the same. Go so out, hang a left, go down the half flight of stairs, hang another left, go down one flight, but here's where it differs. For a fire, you get out of the building. Now, that's just not fire. Chemical spill, anything like that, which could be hazardous in the building, you get out of the building. But with the weather emergency, don't go out of the building, go into the building. So you go down as low as you can go, and then go interior. So where that is out on the first floor, let's just imagine this is the first floor, it looks a lot like this. When you come out of that stairwell, don't go out, come in, you'll see right ahead in front of you are the restrooms. They're actually not bad places to be. Oh, there the walls are close together, lots of corners, that's where the greatest strength is you're in a corner. Not a bad place to be. Except for the fact that if it is a true weather emergency, more than likely we're going to lose power. And if we lose power, you're in the dark in the bathroom. And that may not be the most pleasant place to stay in the dark for a couple of hours. So, if you don't like it there, you can come out the next thing on the first floor. Notice I'm always pointing to interior, and never exterior. Interior is the dean's office. Now, actually, there's a couple of steps going down to that, so be careful going there. The her office is right there. Okay? If she's there, or the associate dean, if somebody's in there, they may welcome you in. That's the same place. And here's one reason. You see, remember I said there's a floor above here, even with this? Everything below that is soil, solid soil. There's no basement under here. That wall can hardly fall down at all. That's a very strong wall, the back wall back here. So you can get into her office. Again, small space, closed wall, corners. Safe place to be. The next space.
face up is the classroom, it's room 160, this door is up here, not the best because there's a lot of open space, but the walls, especially that back wall, very strong, the corners very strong, okay? Not a bad place to be, okay? I wouldn't be in the middle of the room or out the kitchen. Then there's some glass doors in the hallway here, and you enter into the library. Just inside the library, there is a uh, computer room. It's smaller than the classroom, so the walls are closer, but there's corners on four corners, and that back wall, again, is very, very strong. Just inside it, the next room over, what I call the reference room. And again, pretty small space, corners. It does have bookshelves in there. I guess they could tumble, but the likelihood then books fall out of them, so that may not be quite as safe. But don't go any further than that, because anything beyond that, you're an exterior room. You don't want to be with those tornadoes. Because tornadoes send things into the building, they don't make them out necessarily. Limbs and other things come flying in. You don't want to be in the next room. Now, there's one place I left off, and that's the hallway. Negative of the hallway, the, the positive of the walls are close together, so it's pretty strong. You don't have soil on the back side, but you don't have any points. Okay, folks. But, but the big advantage of the hallway is. It has emergency lighting on both ends. So the other spaces here, the interior spaces, when the power goes out, you're in the dark. Okay? So unless you have a cell phone or a flashlight or something, which most of us do, you know, I don't even know where it runs down, I don't know. But the hall has emergency lighting. So it's not a bad place to be, especially up against the wall and some of these different and you wait there. I will be the last person down, following whoever's slowest, and when we get down there, I'll call roll again, and if you want to call somewhere, say, oh, no, the dog's outside, I need to get home and get over because you know, it's going to be a storm. No, leave the dog alone. The dog will take care of itself. You get down there. If we can't find you, someone's having to come back, maybe me or somebody else, come back up into a dangerous situation trying to locate you. So stay together until we call roll, and then after everybody's kind of for it, you can mingle around with friends or whoever. Uh, but don't leave the building. Worst place to be is on the road in a weather emergency. Okay? If you're on the road, they say get off the road, get into a ditch, you know, get into a uh, low part of the field or anything. Just don't be in on the road. Okay. I think that's taking care of weather emergencies. One other safety issue. Okay. Yeah. We never used to even think of things like this. But if you hear what could be pop, pop, pop of a gun, or right that, that of a gun, whatever it is, you'll probably hear it before I will. I'm hard of hearing. Stop it wherever, mid sentence. Say, hey, that sounds like gunfire. What do we do? Say in. Stay in your room. Okay, yeah, we're going to stay in this room. And what I'm going to do is go out of the room because I cannot lock the door from the inside. There's no key here, but I can from the outside. My keys, I have a key that works on this door. Now, all instructions around this, but I have to have it because that's into my office right there, so I have to be able to get in the room to get to my office. No longer do I count the key. So I'll get outside, lock the door, come in, lock from the outside, so you can still get out. Okay? Now, as soon as you hear this rat that tap, somebody get on the phone. Campus police is the best, number one. They'll get in touch with 911. But if you don't have that, 911, say, we think we can hear shooting and get them on the location. As soon as you get off the phone, what do you do? Turn it off. You don't want the phone going off. Some music playing or something else happening when the guy happens to be walking by outside. We're trying to be able. So I don't know if you're satisfied at all. Yeah, things like that. What's that? Yeah, it's a little scratch or something. Tiny scratch. Oh, is that the same time? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then it does start to shoot. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you go down there and see if the instructions are there? Mm -hmm. See if they can be put in today. Okay. Uh, sorry, 
I'll try to get that changed up. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, so that's okay. So we've got this locked. We've turned off the lights. We've gotten very quiet. We've turned off our phones. And we still have sort of a problem. That's this right here. Okay? This goes through that office and that office to that classroom. I don't have a key to that classroom under there. So I can't lock that door. Now I could lock this door because it has a button I can push. But it locks from the inside. Not the outside that locks us in and like and allows him to come out. I say him because it's just about every tutor has been a white man so far in okay, the academy experience. Okay. So I can't do this one. This one has a deadbolt, but I don't have a key for that. But that one is just like this one, but it locks from the outside, not the inside. So I'm going to go across there, I'll close the hall door, then I'll lock that door. Then I'll close this door, and then we'll close this door too. Now that gives us close door. Why close this one? Because that has glass just like this. You can see in. I don't want to see anything. Okay, so I'm going to close this door, close this door, and then we get over here. Every one of us. Why? He can fire through this. That, this, get this barrel in, do all sorts of things. You can't. Most barrels are not curved, okay? Okay, so this is supposed to happen that way, okay? Even in cartoons, you know, that's the only place it happens that way. So, and if he tries to shoot through here, he can. If he tries to shoot through this stuff, he's going to get more coming toward him than he is coming through the wall. So, that's the best place to be in the quietest amounts, okay? And we wait until we get authority saying all is clear. And we make sure it's authority. Now, if he should manage to get through, and it's really not that hard, he can shoot through or break the glass in the outer door, reach in, and allow himself through. Come on, if he knows we're here. But he shouldn't know that. He should be a locked door, black classroom, nothing heard. So he shouldn't even bother. He should go look for other victims. You know, somebody else other than us. Okay. But if you should come in, you don't press over. Your future is ahead of you. Mine's all back here. Okay? Mostly. So let me deal with that. I was in the military. I have had experience with this kind of stuff, but I have been on port patrol and uh, I, I'll take care of them. Whatever happens, you stay safe. Okay? So. Anyway, any questions? Safety of any nature. All right. Then let me get out of this and also see we go to 155, right? Three minutes. I was going to start with the real calculus today, but I don't think I have time to even load the, the PowerPoint. Okay. I have it here. But I have to go to a, is it worth it? Ah, let's, we got two minutes. Let's take advantage of them. Okay, I'll have to reload this for the differential equations. But. Let me ask you a question. What's that? Yeah. Uh, the electronic Uh-huh. I said they need yeah. this to graduate. Right. Okay. Yeah. I need to try to relearn or whatever. Okay. Because I paid for myself. Right. I can enroll in that class. Oh, you can do the differential equation? Yeah. If you, you want, think it'll be too rough for me? What's that? You think it'll be too rough for me? Not for you, but you know, <laughs> it, it just depends on what you want to take on. It's, it's not that. Some of the material is a little, but if we take our time and make sure everybody gets it. It's going to be a small class about this size, so, uh, and you know, you know how I teach, so, and you know, pretty much how I pass, so, you can do it whether you want to take it or not. Yeah, I, I can't say to see these guys want to graduate. I'm sitting here, okay. and I want to do it anyway. You want to do it in training class? 
You're welcome to do it. Love that. Do you think you'll be a hold of the man? Uh, I'm going to open it, and uh, then if y'all will get registered for it. And the thing that's going to help the most is as soon as you can get paid. Okay, because they don't like to open classes for us. And now don't let this influence you in any way whatsoever. I'm probably not going to get paid for teaching it because there's not enough students to pay my salary. But I'm getting paid a salary. You know, it's not going to be no skin off my teeth and I married money. So I'm, I'm in good shape. So uh, I'm not worried about any of that. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'll get it. You're going to consider it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you kind of you still have to clear it. But you know, so yeah, you've you got this week, but after this week, it's too late. So. Any uh, time you're paying. Just like a one more. Yeah, you're paying out of pocket too? Yeah. Okay, well, if, if that works for you, fine, but if it doesn't, yeah. Yeah. And you're going to have to pay for it somewhere sometime. Exactly. And uh, it'll be cheaper here than a four year school. Absolutely. And I think you might get a little more individual attention here <laughs> if you want that. Okay. It goes on taxes. Yeah, okay. 232, uh, 230, what time is it? Uh, 230 to 345. Does that work for you too? Okay. All right, there were our two minutes. Okay, so uh, we'll get out of this, I'll close this, and we'll come back for differential equations, and I'll go down and get it opened so y'all can... And if you want to go down and register for it as soon as I get it open, you can. Um, are you still in it, you think, or do you not? Uh, I know they said he said he counseled you, so he yeah. dropped before the But if, if they haven't removed you from the class, you may still be there, so when I open it back up. Oh, yeah, that's the one I wanted. Or the help desk or any register uh, advisor you happen to find, they can help you with that, too. Yeah, I'm two years now. What's that? I've got to go back and get like my blackboard password. I don't have any of that yet. Okay. I guess I'm parking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a week or so, but yeah, you can take care of some of that too. The parking is at the cashier's window. You know where that is, right by the bookstore. I walk around this place three times before I find. No, I can walk you down there in just a minute. Okay. Well, one of them will be able to help you too. Okay, I'm going to try to get set up for this. All right, and I'm going to open the class right now okay. if it'll let me. No, come. I'll be here in at three thirty. Uh, Two thirty. Okay. Yeah, right here. Right. <laughs> If you can find your way back here. I said if you can find your way back here. <laughs> this building's a maze. Huh? No, no, it's fine. I'll be leaving in a minute.